Greetings and salutations everyone, this is Sugachir BG here at it again and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 upcoming JRPG games for the year of 2023. At number 10 we have Metal Slug Tactics and this is obviously a game franchise that has been around for decades which has been historically known as a 2D action side-scroller game and now this is their first array in the this sort of a tactic style RPG style of a gameplay but you can still see the familiar characters from the game franchise the same very crisp art style and it also it seems that the tactic style combat seems to be very fast fast pace, kind of like the side-scrolling action in the original games. So it seems this could be a very potential new entry uh, to this already known franchise. Now at this point we don't have an exact release date for this game, but we do know that it's going to be releasing on PC, on Steam and also for Switch, but we don't know whatever it's going to be releasing also in the other consoles in the future. As for number 9, we have a game called Eternites. This is developed and published by Studio Sai. It's going to be launching on PS4, PS5, and also for PC in Steam. And this is one of those games that I truly consider as one of the dark horses of the year because it has a very interesting look. The art style combines anime with these monochromatic colors, and then you have neon lights and this sort of a cyberpunk style uh, UI interface top of it. It has a very fresh look look and it doesn't exactly look like anything else that has come before exactly 101. Now also top of the interesting art style it is a genre blending game so top of the action JRPG combat that you have inside the game there's also a dating sim aspect to the game and you can see from the interface that it uses the day and the calendar system from Persona which is probably one of the main influences of this game so basically you can go fight monsters on a day but you can also go talk to the girls at the same day and then there seems to be a lot of platforming things and other aspects to the game which makes it seem very refreshing and very varied in terms of its playstyle which makes me kind of excited for this game and see how it will be panning out. And for the number 8, we have a very beloved tactics game series, Fire Emblem, releasing their latest title, Engage, on January 20th for Nintendo Switch. Now, this is going to be a bit more of a departure from the game that we had with the three houses, in the sense that they're going to be scrapping all of these uh, persona, dating, and social aspects from the game, and instead, it's probably going to be playing a lot more like Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn instead. But you still have, like, option to roam around, um, between the missions and you can visit shops I guess to buy items also there seems to be some customization options for the characters in terms of costumes and outfits so there might be more of an emphasis on customization of your visual side of the characters in this game versus tree houses also uh, for the first time you have these avatars which are basically these characters manifesting from the, all the other uh, mainline Fire Emblem games so this is more like a bit of like a homage style of a game you're seeing these heroes from the previous games making appearances again in this one. So Engage is probably going to be a lot more akin to the older Fire Emblem titles than Tree Houses. But alas, I am still very excited. And for the number 7, we have a very interesting game called Meto Anomalies, developed by Arrowviz. This is going to be launching on PC, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and also Xbox Series X and S. And this is once again one of those truly Dark Horse titles. It has a very key, distinctive look to it. Looks very different from a lot of the stuff that we have seen in the past. And you are exploring this sort of like a fantasy slash neo-futuristic city, which is very like original oriental infused like this could be like Hong Kong or some uh, Japanese or Chinese city and you're playing this game through two different protagonists so one you have this private detective known as Do who will be kind of uncovering the mystery uh, you know in the upper city of, of a Mato and you get to go through the streets and the clubs and everything and then you have the other guy Graham who's basically like fighting these demonic abominations like what seems to be like the undercity or some type of other world and this seems to be like a very interesting dynamic 
and I have to just like get a demo or something to try it out myself before I can really tell like how I'm going to be feeling about this. But I do really think that it seems very, very unique from all types of perspectives. And as for the number 6, we have a game called Octopath Traveler 2, which is published and developed by Square Enix. This is going to be launching on PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and also for PC on Steam. Now, this is going to be playing out quite similar to the first game. However, it is not mandatory to play the first game in order to play the second game, because there's completely a new story and completely new 8 characters, which you get to play from each of their own perspectives. But there are some new uh, adjustments that have been added such as daytime and nighttime segments on the gameplay so differing from your path actions there might be some differing uh, things that may happen depending on the time of the day also the combat stays relatively the same but they have added this new system called latent powers which are basically like limit breaks from Final Fantasy games and obviously the graphics have been improved from the first game so we're seeing a lot more you know 2.5d camera angles and the graphics on the background seem to be a bit more detailed. I mean, it's still kind of like that very uh, sprite 32-bit uh, tile style of, uh, you know, uh, character models, but, but you know, it has still improved a bit and it looks a lot more cleaner than the first game does. And in case you're kind of into that indie style of a graphic style, this definitely might be a good pick for you. Next up we have number 5, which might be the game that you're most excited about on this whole list, and that is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is going to be launching as a PS5 exclusive, and that exclusivity deal is going to be lasting anywhere from 6 to 12 months before we're going to be seeing it at on Steam and on Epic Games. And we don't know the exact release date for the PS5 version, so they have said winter, so that could be anywhere from October to December of 2023, or it could even slide up till February of 2024. But I do believe that they are aiming for that December uh, timeline here because they want to cash into the Christmas markets and get p parents to basically buy the game for their kids. Now, for the most part, the game is obviously continuing where the story left off when they uh, exited from Midgar. I have a rough idea where the second game is going to be end. That's probably on the ancient city. And there's going to be obviously a lot of different things. We haven't been told too much what's going on with this game. But obviously the graphics do look a lot better than they did look in PS4. The new characters are going to be obviously appearing. Yuffie and Vincent and probably Sid as well. But we have to wait until we're going to be getting a lot more information about this game and what's going to be happening next. But alas, I'm still very excited about the direction of this game. Then going for the number 4, we have a game called Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes, which is published by 505 Games and developed by Rapid and Bear Studios. And this was basically initially a Kickstarter project, and I think it was like the most fastest game ever funded on Kickstarter. It's one of the most success stories ever come out from that platform. And basically this is going to be a spiritual successor to the Suikoden series. And it has this a very cool art style, which is a combination of like 3D backgrounds, and and, you know like 2.5d camera angles and everything but all the characters are sprite art themselves and one of the other you know selling points for this game obviously is outside from the you know OGs coming back to develop this game is that you're gonna get to play over hundred different characters in the game so my assumption is that there's gonna be a lot of replayability value uh, for this game there's also a prequel game uh, known as the rising which you can also pick out right now which I'm probably gonna be reviewing at some point on the channel haven't been too big fan of that game, but I don't think that there's going to be any indication of the quality of 100 Heroes, though, as a standalone game. But we have to see when the exact release date is going to be coming out, but I'm assuming somewhere between Summer and Quarter 4. Next up on the list we have number 3 and that is a game called Grand Blue Fantasy Relink which is developed by Psy Games and Platinum Games. This is going to be launching on PS4, PS5 and also on PC. Now this game has been notoriously delayed again and again so hopefully it's going to be really launching in 2023. However, there's a lot of competition that they're going to be facing in terms of action JRPG games like Final Fantasy 7 and 16 and others which are also going to be launching that year 
here. So uh, it's not going to be easy for them, no matter what time they're going to be launching. And the game actually looks very, very good. The level design is gorgeous. The character models are pretty nice. And the combat looks extremely fun to play. It also supports online play. I'm not sure if there's going to be a cross-play. But you can like team up up to like four different uh, friends and play together as a group. So it's kind of like an MMO experience in a way. It kind of reminds me of the Crystal Chronicles in that sense. So there's a lot of potential with this game in terms of how fun it is and, you know, uh, and like how much content there is going to be. But it's going to be really, you know, going down the release date and the execution uh, with this one. And let's see how it's going to be turning out. Gram Blue obviously has other games in its franchise which have already like a building out a fan base. And obviously there's an anime as well. So who knows? It can be, you know, a bit of a sleeper game uh, for 2023. And for the number two, we have a game called One Piece Odyssey. This is developed by ILCA. It's going to be launching on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and also for PC on January 13th. And this is actually an original story written by the mangaka Oda. So it's not exactly canon material, but it's considered kind of more like akin to the One Piece movies, which also have been written by Oda. He hasn't written all of them, but I think he has like written all the three latest ones. And I guess it can be enjoyed as a, like a, you know, a One Piece fan. And I'm a big fan of the anime, obviously, and some of the movies are okay, I guess. So I don't have huge expectations for the story itself, but it seems like from a graphic perspective, it looks pretty nice. The, the way that the world is explored and the terrain looks pretty fun. And the turn-based combat doesn't look very half bad either. But is it an excellent game for non-One Piece fans? Remains to be seen. And it could be a total train wreck, but it seems like very interesting from you know the level design and everything kind of looks kind of beautiful so I, I'm kind of like you know on a toss whatever it will be a good or a bad one but I guess we will be seeing in time and then finally we have the number one which is none other than Final Fantasy 16 and this is developed by Creative Business Unit 3 and published by Square and it's going to be a PS5 exclusive and maybe two or three years after the DLC cycle we might see some type of a PC port out of the game which is going to be something akin to the King's Edition of Final Fantasy 15. Now in terms of the release date we know it's going to be happening on summer and likely tomorrow on on Game Awards or on the 18th when the 35th Final Fantasy Anniversary stream happens we might see or hear the actual release date for the game alongside with some of the other Final Fantasy titles. Now when it comes to the game I am equally excited and worried about this game because when we look into the whole mainline Final Fantasy games I think this could be the redeeming title. But when we look into 12 or the 13 trilogy or 15, these were kind of divisive titles among the general Final Fantasy fans. Yes, they had their own fans, but for the most part, they were divisive in terms of their stories, at least. There were a lot of weird game design choices, which kind of were mixing heads too. And I'm not really that much worried about the combat of this game or the progression systems, but I'm more so worried about how the story is going to be panning out in 16. And based on the trailers that we have seen so far, it does seem kind of interesting setting. You have this sort of a Game of Thrones-esque medieval Europe with fantasy elements like magic and you have six factions which all kind of control their own uh, Acons, which are basically the summons and this time I guess the summons are playing a bigger role in the overall story They had a bit of a big story I guess in the 15 but not like really well executed in some ways But I think this time around they're gonna be much more integral part about the overall story of this Final Fantasy and you know, I, I think the action combat is gonna be great uh, regarding are we going to be having other controllable characters in the party remains to be seen which is pretty weird to me because given to the fact that all of these other action JRPG games whatever it's Tales or Star Ocean allow you to control different characters as well I don't know why Square is not able to do the same but who knows maybe they're going to be patching it in after like they did with 15 but that would be a mistake but there are a lot of things you know which we don't know about the game and we're probably going to be seeing a lot more uh, demos coming out soon too so it's kind of up in the air but I think there's so much potential with this game like 
there are a bit of different people in charge now in terms of the directors where Matsu is not working on the OST sadly either but you know uh, this this could be make it or break it for the franchise it could be taking it back into redeeming it from its slump I guess and uh, seeing how it will pan out but I am very excited for this game I think there's gonna be despite if I don't like the story I think there's gonna be always some elements on each Final Fantasy game that I always enjoy and that has been kind of consistently the case as I've played all the games. But that's pretty much my top 10 list of games which are not exactly in any particular order guys like these are kind of all over the place in, in terms of like what order I'm personally excited about. I just wanted to compile a 10 top 10 list here but um, thanks for watching if you want to see more JRPG reviews, content, anything JRPG related this is your channel dude so make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching and peace out.